inky blade of glory slashes across the page, scribing out the borders of a personality, a person, a whole character who's about to do battle with the pitched forces of darkness, an engagement that will decide whether whole worlds live free or die in agony. Hello, welcome to Sparks 1524. I am Nathaniel Miller coming to you from my temporary studio in Niceville, Florida. As we continue our conversation about how do I become a writer, we need to look at creating characters. Fiction writers have to create characters that are believable, real enough, and engaging enough that your readers want to follow their story, and maybe even feel like this is somebody they could run into on the street. Actors are, of course, masters at creating characters. If you study method acting, this is a method where the actor literally takes on the persona, the mannerisms they live as that character the whole time they're in production. Daniel Day-Lewis is famous for it in his movies, and he has won three Academy Awards for Best Actor because he is so good at it. With rare exceptions, playing a double role, actors do this for one character at a time. Writers, we have to do this for multiple characters on multiple levels at the same time in the same story. We all know a lot of characters. They're called our family and our friends. They're called the people we run into at the street, that bar barista at Starbucks that we like to talk to, the, uh, the server at the restaurant who we you know have a little back and forth and a little fun with while we're eating. This is your reference library. We all have a reference library of our experiences. I have mine. You have yours, my teddy bear has his. And believe me, my teddy bear is great at spinning a yarn. These people I know, their traits are picked from that library to create the characters. However, creating a character is more than just picking traits and sticking in there. You've got to make that person believable, and you've got to be able to trans translate that to your audience. Now, if you excuse me for a minute, I have to put these on because I'm, not, I'm about to be 50, but I have the eyes of an 80-year-old. Fortunately, the 80-year-old has not noticed they're missing. It is easy for anyone to draft the following. I like New York style pizza, John Smith said. Being able to roll up that thin crust in something like an Italian burrito is the height of good eating. I prefer Chicago deep dish myself, said Jane Doe. I think it's more filling than New York pizza, tastes better and doesn't drip sauce anywhere. Alrighty, that little bit there gives you a little bit. Now, not every interaction of your characters needs to be some deep biographical revelation, but you need to more often than not provide imagery so your audience can see what's happening. And working in a little biographical information as well as a little nuance of inflection and uh, emphasis makes these people come alive. So here's the same exchange but written a little differently. I like New York style pizza, John Doe said, his mouth clearly watering with relish at the thought. Holding up his craggy hands, he mimed rolling up the imaginary food as his voice took on a sultry tone usually reserved for describing the opposite sex. Being able to roll up that thin crust into something like an Italian burrito is the height of good eating. I prefer Chicago deep dish myself, Jane Doe dismissed Smith's passionate recital with a wave of her bejeweled hand. Settling herself, she began to school him on the joys of the cuisine she'd grown up with in the Windy City. I think it's more filling than New York pizza, it tastes better, and it doesn't drip sauce everywhere. The first rendition of that little scene was, eh, okay, two people talking about pizza. The second rendition of that scene gives you two characters. You now know a little about them. If you've never heard anything else, you picked up a little about these people. John Doe is craggy hands. Why are his hands craggy? That kind of indicates a... Uh, if not a blue-collar life, then somebody who does a lot of manual work. Maybe as a hobby, but they do a lot of manual work. He takes on a passionate tone about his food. He loves his food so much he's almost talking about in a way that most of us would associate talking about somebody we're attracted to. Jane Doe, now suddenly she has a bejeweled hand, so maybe she's rich, maybe she works in a corporate, maybe she's a corporate vice president, so she needs to be dressed a little better. We don't know, but the fact that she has a bejeweled hand tells you a little about her right there. We know she grew up in Chicago. You can tell from the fact that there's no indication of animosity that even though she may be dismissing John Smith, there's not animosity. Clearly there's a relationship here that works for both of them. You just got two characters. That's what you have to do is give your reader the sense they're listening to real people talk and watching real people. Two thirds of human communication is nonverbal. One third of even what's going on here on this video is you hearing the words, can you hear the words coming out of my mouth? The old joke. Literally, that's only one third. The other two thirds of this are the nonverbals. My voice inflection, my rate of speech, how much I'm making eye contact while here with the camera, uh, what I'm doing with my hands. This is one reason why emails and texts can go awry so quickly. There's no nonverbals. You may make a 
joke and email that comes across as a vicious insult, but if you were in person with the person you were talking to, they might end up laughing because even though you use words that are vicious, your mannerism and how you deliver it might convey that it's actually a joke that you two can share. As a writer, you've got to provide those non-visuals, and that's, help, that's part of how you create these characters. You've always heard, show, don't tell. Well, you've got to show your audience. The first dialogue I read to you, we were just telling the audience, I was just telling you what was going on. The second one, I started showing you by describing John Smith's hand, describing his tone of voice as he was lusting over this pizza. I described, I showed you Jane Doe a little bit by how she apparently dresses, her love of Chicago. You saw those things. If you were sitting in the restaurant at the next table over and glanced at them, you could imagine yourself actually seeing two people having that conversation. Now, when it comes to writing, though, one thing writers can do that gets all of us tripped up is trying to do too much at the same time. If you're an architect and you want to build a house, you don't go to the building site with all the materials at once and put it all together in one big blah and have a house. It doesn't work like that. You have your drawing, your architectural drawings, or your outline. You start with the frame, kind of the skeleton of it. Then you add the walls, the electrical system, etc., etc. Piece at a time you build the house, building on each piece before. When I draft a novel, or even one of my columns here, I kind of bat out, I have the outline up here, but I bat out just the skeletal. If Again, use the house analogy, just the studs and the wall frames and the roof trusses, I just bat that out. Then I'll go back and start adding in the color, adding in the mannerisms of the characters, adding in the rate of speech, all those little details. Don't try and do it all at once. That's where a lot of people get tripped up. The more you get to know your characters, it's very strange, but the more they will start talking to you and tell you who they are. That comes with experience, and that's one of the most joyful parts of this, is you're sitting there writing and suddenly your characters are telling you what they want to say and how they want to say it. That's how real these people can become to you. When they become that real to you, and you share that with your audience, that's when you become a winner. That's when people start to care about these characters because they feel like this is somebody I could meet. So pick up that pen, that inky blade of glory, and let it slash across the page as you practice and have fun creating these characters. Have fun building these worlds. Have fun, then, translating that into a visually literary experience for your reader. Till next time, go and do some great things, have fun, and be safe.